Clean Water Services safeguards the Tualatin River's health and vitality, ensuring the region's economic success and protecting public health for more than 570,000 residents and businesses in urban Washington County. Each day, Clean Water Services cleans an average of 60 million gallons of wastewater. For half a century, technical innovation has been the district's forte. First, it was a pioneer in the removal of phosphorus from wastewater. Now, Clean Water Services manages phosphorus to recover that vital and limited resource to address a looming global shortage. So now we're really looking at our treatment facilities as resource recovery facilities, recovering water, energy, and nutrients. It's really not about how do we get rid of something as we take all this water into these plants, but what's the best use of the resources that are delivered to us? Tualatin River had virtually been robbed of all of its flow in the summer. The state stepped in and placed a building moratorium on Washington County because there wasn't an adequate level of treatment. And it, frankly, it was a public health crisis and it was an environmental crisis. This group called the Clean Water for Life Committee helped place an initiative on the ballot in 1970 to unify all these 26 wastewater treatment plants into a single regional utility. And that passed by two to one. In the early 80s, however, population boomed. New industries flourished and agricultural innovation accelerated. Phosphorus and other pollutants accumulated in the slow flowing river. Harmful and unsightly algae blooms appeared. When I was younger and telling people that we were getting on the river was a rarity. Nobody was on the river. We would be the only ones. It was EPA the federal agency that was sued back then, it was because they failed to take the next step in identifying numeric limits for phosphorus. There was no real number until the TMDL, or the total maximum daily load, uh, was applied to Durham as the first treatment plant in the country to uh, be subject to the TMDL rules. It was a, a remarkable effort. Technology didn't exist at that time to produce those levels of quality in our effluent. So we had to really evolve technology to meet it. That was, to me, was a, a watershed moment for the district where it got us from just meeting our permit to realizing and believing that we could really do something special. To meet the initial phosphorus removal requirement, lime addition was used. Process improvements followed, such as retrofitting existing basins for chemical precipitation and absorption using alum. Meeting those levels is very difficult and it's very expensive. And so it's clearly in our best interest to try to reduce those costs as much as possible. And so that's why we went to biological phosphorus removal to supplement our chemical removal at our plants. And once we started doing uh, BioP, biological phosphorus removal, we really went full in to better understand what we're doing. This is not just adding chemicals to get rid of one pollutant. This is managing bacteria. Clean Water Services developed and patented a fermentation process, UFET, to provide a carbon source for the biological phosphorus removal organisms. Chemical costs went down and less biosolids were created. Biological phosphorus removal not only reduced the environmental impact of wastewater treatment, it opened the door to the next giant leap forward, recovering phosphorus in the waste stream for reuse. Phosphorus is a limited resource. To grow enough food fast enough for everybody, you have to have phosphorus in your fertilizers to fertilize your agricultural land. One of the problems with phosphorus, as we're depleting it, there's no new phosphorus deposits being created. We're mining it and extracting it, and we get lower and lower quality ore. In 2007, Clean Water Services partnered with Ostara to pilot a phosphorus recovery process. What we saw here was a way to close the loop on phosphorus, stop this one way, digging out of the ground, consuming, and then spreading into the environment. Clean Water Services really were the, the, the pioneers. They were the first utility that, uh, that took the leap to innovate and to do something like this uh, at their plant. Technology like this that recaptures locally and reuses that nutrient locally is, is a big deal. It's really made everyone a lot more passionate about what they do. It's not just understanding uh, how to recover phosphorus, but the real desire of the operators to help facilitate the overall process. 
the law strip process, which is fundamental to uh, phosphorus recovery, was developed here at Clean Water Services. I thought if we took the waste activated sludge, treated it so it would release the phosphorus and magnesium, squeeze the water out of it, the water contains the magnesium and phosphorus, send that directly to Ostara. It turbocharges our, our reactors, so it gives us twice the, uh, the, the phosphorus to recover than we would otherwise have without it. Now, every year, Clean Water Services treatment plants recover enough phosphorus to produce more than 450 tons of slow-release, high-value fertilizer. It's one thing to talk in the abstract about phosphorus scarcity and then phosphorus pollution. It's another thing entirely to be able to hold a bag and demonstrate kind of the fruits of our labor. They really think outside the box and try and come up with inventive ways to solve problems that are going to save their ratepayers money in the long run and create this really amazing ecosystem that people can enjoy. The water is cleaner than it's been in generations and it, it, it's a beautiful resource. It's very exciting and it, it makes me wonder what else can we do?